On this week's Silver Screen Report, we have a preview of next week's Winter Assembly, show you how to make some delicious holiday treats, and profile varsity football coach Tom Knotts. Good afternoon, Dutch Fork. Today is Friday, December 8th, and your Silver Screen Report starts now. and dance students are busily preparing for their annual winter assembly next Wednesday. Maria Silva has a preview of the show and an overview of concert etiquette. Dutch Fork dancers and musicians say the upcoming winter assembly is a time to finally showcase what they have been preparing for all year. Uh, the concert's held to showcase the hard work the students have been putting into the class this far and show the parents, their family and friends what they've been doing. Just to kind of bring everybody together and um, kind of wrap up a semester and, and ready to go into the Christmas break, two weeks of fun with your family. To celebrate the holidays during exam week and just to see all the different arts perform. Etiquette during the assembly means a great deal to everyone performing. We want them to, like, to be really quiet and enjoy what's going on. It's not a pep rally. We want them to cheer for their, their fellow students at the end of each piece. Um, but during them, we want them to just really be engaged and involved quietly and respectfully. I would just expect them to be quiet and intuitive to what's going on in front of them. Audience members should be respectful to the performers. They should be quiet and be attentive and um, congratulate the performers when they're finished, support them, show their appreciation for taking the time to play for them. The way students behave during the assembly affects the focus of every performer. It shows respect to the different arts and I mean they're just showing us what they've done all semester and so it's important to just be quiet. No one wants to be, you know, have people being rude to them, their performance. You know, a lot of things can distract and we don't want to mess the performers up. It takes a long time for these students to learn, um, practice and perfect these pieces and so we want to respect their work and their artistry so we hope that they will, um, the students will understand that, recognize that and respect that. You want to like stay focused but also like enjoy having an audience. This has been Maria Silva with your Silver Screen Report. In keeping with the holiday spirit, on this week's Fox Fridge, we'll teach you how to make a sweet treat for the holiday season. Here's Maddie McCormick with the recipe. Welcome to this week's Fox Fridge. Today we'll be making Christmas tree brownies. First you'll need two thirds cup of oil, two eggs, and one fourth of water. And of course your brownie mix. And for the decorations you'll need some candy canes, green and white icing, and some sprinkles of your choice. And now you'll set your oven to 350. So now we'll be putting them in the oven at 350 for about 30 minutes. After baking for 30 minutes, take them out and let them cool. Now that we've let them cool, cut them into Christmas tree shapes. Now for our last step, Get some friends together and decorate the Christmas trees with their candy canes and sprinkles. In their final semester of college, student teachers discover the realities of what it's like to work with high school students. Kylie Fine introduces us to the student teachers who have been working in the art department this semester. University student teachers explore new ideas by observing and engaging in classroom responsibilities. So what I do is when I come in, uh, at first I'm just kind of observing um, my teacher and then eventually I start taking on her roles as a teacher. When I first got here I was just observing and watching how the classes worked, how the school worked, um, different management strategies that Ms. Sheely uses. Um, as the weeks progressed, I was writing my own lessons and coming up with different things that I wanted to teach. Students are eager to pursue new projects from student teachers. Being a student teacher in the classroom has helped me because she brings in a lot of different perspectives and ideas. And so it's nice sometimes just to get something totally new and different. It gives them a new perspective. They're used to, you know, my personality and how I do things in class. So to have somebody else come in with a fresh way of teaching and showing demonstrations and new projects. It's just nice to have more than one perspective. She grades, she helps us, she gives ideas and advice, she teaches and makes lesson plans. 
Teachers say that having student teachers are beneficial because they bring fresh ideas and perspectives. It not only helps me with students, but it's also just nice to have a perspective straight out of the university. Sometimes you get used to the same old things that you've learned and when you have a student teacher come in, they give you a whole new light on what you're doing. This has been Kylie Fine with your Silver Screen Report. Unity Club wants the world to see everyone as one despite our differences. Here's India Wright with more. Math teacher Evelyn Hyatt is leading the charge for equality at Spotshaw Unity Club. Unity Club is about accepting individuals regardless of any physical makeup, um, just about loving kids regardless of what neighborhood they're from or their nationality or their religious beliefs. Unity Club is activities that bring people closer together. But we just do different activities that encourage unity, um, just getting, it, getting everybody comfortable with different people and just kind of talking about our differences and our beliefs. We do a lot of different activities, like today we did the hands, but um, we talk about like our cultures and different stuff like that. Members of the club outline what it takes to join. Join the club by just seeing me in room 309, um, or you can um, see one of our officers um, we meet Tuesday mornings, 80 mornings. You can come to any of our meetings. We meet on some Tuesday A days. It just depends on what day it is, but it'll be on the announcements. You don't have to pay a fee or anything. It's really easy. Like um, in the announcements, all like new members are welcome. This has been India Wright. The SCT word of the week is amalgamate, a verb meaning to bring together or unite. For this week's Kids in the Hall, we asked students about the importance of having a diverse society. That we as people can come together and show that we can be more uni unified and diverse and so we can get past any differences. Diversity is important so everyone can understand different walks of life. <laughs> Diversity is important because this world itself is very diverse. It's important to see other people represented in all kinds of media. Diversity is very important in modern society because it allows people to realize that there is more than just one culture going on, and it allows everyone to be either be accepting or more educated on certain opinions and how the world works everywhere and in school. Tom Knotts has led the Dutch Fork varsity football team to dozens of victories during his time here. Bailey Hunter sat down with Knotts, his friends, and his family to talk about his recent victory and why he became Dutch Forks coach. On Saturday, Coach Tom Knotts won his 10th state championship. Over the last seven football seasons at Dutch Fork, he has brought us to the final game five times. First year, obviously, we had to lay the foundation and you know get, get my philosophy installed, not only in the players, but, but in the coaches, and then, um, you know, from there, we've uh, we had one one year where we just were racked with injuries, but every other year we've been, you know, we've been in contention for a state championship. Those Knox, uh, you can sum it up with three words: intensity, passion, and devotion. Although Knox has been coaching football for 37 years, it took a lot of hard work to get where he is today. Well, I played sports all my life and football was all my, always my favorite. I went to Duke University on a football scholarship and like all scholarship players had aspirations for the pros and uh, bounced around a couple of minor leagues, semi-pro type teams and when I didn't make it I said well the next best thing is coaching. So I went back and uh, I, I didn't really want to be a college coach. I liked high school age kids, and uh, so I got my teaching certificate and uh, started out as a social studies teacher and uh, got a PE add-on, so I was able to move into PE and weight training. So I taught a combination of social studies and, and weight training and, and coached football. Not only coached football, I coached basketball, tennis. Uh, you know, those were my favorite sports, and uh, just. You know, just a, I'm a sports guy, so you know I, I like the teaching part too. But the, the the coaching was what what was the most fun for me and the most satisfying. Coaching football takes up a lot of time, affecting Nats's personal life. We don't see him as much during football, but he tries to make time, and so we're involved in the 
football as far as we don't miss games? From basically from June to December, I don't have much of a personal life. I am married with a, with a young child and uh, that suffers a little bit, unfortunately, but uh, after December, uh, going into the new year, uh, I, I do have a, a lot better personal and family life than what I have during football. I'm pretty much committed to, you know, to Dutch Fork athletics and, and football in particular. This has been Bailey Hunter with your Silver Screen Report. Thanks for watching. Because we'll be preparing for our exams, we won't have a show next Friday. Have a safe and happy break. We'll see you next year.